10 years in the NFL, a noted quarterback evaluator of some esteem. Mark Sanchez is now joining us. How are you? Good to see Excellent. you. Excellent. And um, we got notes. Also, we got notebooks. I got it all for you. I know. Man. I love that. So um, Caleb Williams pro day. had his pro day. Uh, I, I saw 10 minutes of it. Mm -hmm. um, missed on a couple of throws. Um what did you make of it? What did you see? What did you make of it? I think most importantly, I view pro days as a pass fail. I don't think it's going to override what you've done and put on film. I don't think it's going to override all the visits you've taken and all the private workouts you do, but you also have to have some sort of expectation that, listen, you got five to seven guys that you played with over the last couple of years. You're going to rehearse this routine and throw anywhere from 40 to 60 footballs on air without a defense it's a pretty light load when it comes to mental gymnastics right. there's no coverages blitzes you're not running for your life it is drop back hit your back foot reset and cut the ball loose i don't expect the football to hit the ground much right, right? and maybe i'm too harsh as a grader but come on that's i mean this is like a no-brainer in my opinion a prerequisite this is standard <laughs> okay so for caleb i thought he assessed it perfectly when when he was on the show he just immediately owned the deep balls that he missed. And those were the only takeaways I had. Everything else was perfect. It looked effortless. It looked, uh, you know, 25 yards and shorter was, I mean, just dimes on a money ball spinning. Now, a couple of them got squirrely to the right, the yeah. deep ball to the right. And then he finished on this monster heave to Brendan Rice running out the back door. I mean, that was perfect. I think he showed some of the things that people might have been concerned about being able to go from under center, take seven step drops, do your hardcore, you know, wide zone action back to the defense, flip your head and your hips and your eyes around and hit a moving target. Yes. He checked all those boxes. So to me, it's, it's a pass all the way. Would I like to see every ball completed? Sure. We're on air. I don't want to, you know, you should beat air. It's just my take is there an argument to be made that playing in los angeles big expectations and being paid while you're doing it that mm. nil he's the first nil superstar the big yep that it was kind of an advantage preparing him for the league well i think it's a great um great experience as you mentioned advantage for him because that's what it's like in the nfl and especially if he goes to somewhere like chicago which is arguably as tough a market as new york i mean at least new york has two teams to beat up on Chicago's got one, and they beat up on him just as hard. Ask Mitch, uh, Mitch Trubisky. Ask Mike Glennon. I was in the quarterback room with them, and sometimes things happen for a reason. I was the you know coaching cleats kind of deal, didn't suit up for any games, was a backup type guy. And because of my experience in New York, I was able to impart some knowledge on those guys because that that's normal. <laughs> Dude, this is the way it is. Trubisky made that's, the playoffs and got crushed. Right, but this was his rookie year. I mean – one game, it's, oh, we took the wrong draft pick. And then the next game is, he's our savior. We're going to the Super Bowl. 85 Bears, here we come. I mean, it's such a roller coaster. So he's felt some of that in Los Angeles. And now moving to this other market, whatever it is, it's going to be a pretty good-sized market wherever he goes. We're assuming Chicago. If it is, it's just as big as anything else. Um, all this talk about different players and first round, second round. Um, the Sam Darnold situation is interesting. I love Minnesota's offensive personnel. Mm -hmm. And I do think Sam is liked by the right people. Shanahan liked him. Agreed. I've been told McVay likes him. Kevin O'Connell. Uh, nothing against Brian Flores. He didn't like Tua. Mike McDaniel did. Well, the offensive coach was right. Sure. Like some, They speak a different language. Uh, the Minnesota situation, them moving up, makes a ton of sense. That's why they accumulate a second pick. But I said yesterday, I could see Sam having a Baker redemption year where you look up and you're like, those are pretty good weapons. Well, yes. It, and how do you view it? It's also a philosophy thing. I don't want this to get lost with people and it just kind of gets caught up in the fray all the time. But when you commit to that guy as a starter and it's, gonna, and it's going to work, come hell or high water, I don't care. If you're in this building, we are going to make Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, whoever it is, successful. There's something to that. Instead of... Well, let's see how he does. And if not, we'll just go get another one. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's some sort of commitment at the, like you know, um, uh, Cortez and analogy. And felt it. Yeah, whole, totally felt it. The Cortez analogy, burn the boats. Once you get to the, to the new land, <laughs> burn the boats. You ain't coming back. Make right. it work out there. So that is a mentality. And when everybody's on that page, on that same, you know, on that same wavelength, 
There's no other option. This is our guy. We don't care what anybody else says, and we're going to make it work. The antithesis of that would probably be somewhere like Pittsburgh, where everybody's like looking around like, well, who is him or him? Or, That's I, weird. Ooh, this is tough. I don't, I don't know what to do with that. It's hard. It's really hard for both guys because they want to be professional, but there's a killer instinct in both of them to go win You're pro and make plays. Yeah, and they want to be the guy. And, oh, by the way, there's only one. <laughs> only one guy who gets to take the snap every play, okay? It's not like receiver. It's not like tight end. It's not like running back. There's one. And when you have more than one, sometimes you have none. So I feel like that mentality of making it work with whatever quarterback you have is important. Yeah, the, the Steelers is interesting because I, I had said this earlier with J-Mac. I have to believe that Russell and his agent got some assurances, I would think. You would think. I, right? I, I don't know. That, was, that one really caught me by surprise. And maybe, maybe it's a, um, a acquire capital and later on, you know, we got a, we got a big – um, we got a big opportunity to unload one of these guys somewhere when okay. there's a need in okay. camp or whatever. Good and, call. You know, quarterback A is outperforming quarterback B, and, hey, you guys want him for a second rounder? Uh, you know, your guy just went down. How bad do you want him? What else are you going to give us? You know what I mean? Maybe it's that. And maybe they have the aerial view of the parade and they can see the finish line. I can't. I'm caught up in the fans and the <laughs> chaos right now. And, the, you know, I, I, I just can't see that. But who knows? They, they, they hopefully have a plan. I, I was thinking about this a couple days ago. So let's say the draft is done. And I want, I, I would think to my, this is just the way I am, probably the same way. I want that, I want the playbook. I don't care about right, my contract. Right. Get me the playbook. Right. Let, last thing I want to do is banging over a million when I, am I going to make my real money in the second, third contract? Sure. For these quarterbacks who are all going to get taken mostly in the first round or high second, um, we tend to think you're drafted. Whew, the anxiety leaves. No, it's just starting. <laughs> How long did you have to wait for a jet playbook? Well, you know, uh, I don't think we can get in trouble for anything we did back then now. But um, <laughs> you, there's like a couple weeks. I came back home after getting drafted, uh, graduated school, walked in like commencement or did something like that. And then you go back and you're there for kind of a week before rookie camp. So there's a few weeks in between where you're kind of training on your own, trying to call up guys that are on the team you're going to, working out in, uh, at Columbia University in, in Manhattan, uh, you know, and you didn't have throwing the, the ball, ball around to Chancey Stuckey and Dustin Keller and Leon Washington. <laughs> and then we're going to have our rookie training camp coming up or mini camp, excuse me. Um, and you're, you know, learning plays from players and wow. you remember the playbook they gave you during the draft process. So you're studying that and it's like two installs worth of plays. So it's, I mean, it is a weird couple weeks, almost a month of existence because you kind of get forgotten about. And those are some of the most important days leading up That's to it. Your and, initial and some of it has to do with like when you, when you graduate. So if you're on a quarter system, you can't quite join the team yet. And they have to schedule things around that. It is a weird, weird time, a strange existence for yeah. quarterbacks right after the draft. That's why I think maturity is really important. Oh, no doubt. And, and you're trying to figure it out. I mean, we're trying to figure out who these kids are. These kids are trying to figure out who they are <laughs> at the same time. And so there's, there's so much more that goes into it. And that's why we talk about the, this, this idea that, that is it the talent level? Is it the system you go to? Is it the fit? Is it the commitment to whoever's under center is our guy? I mean, all those things factor in. And that's why, I mean, I'm going to tease this a little bit, but this Drake May stuff, I'm falling in love with this kid more and more. As I watch him, I'm like... I mean, that Carolina blue looks nice. <laughs> I'm just telling you, I like, I mean, James Taylor in my mind, I'm gone to Carolina, baby. This dude, I'm, I'm on him right now. I like him a lot. I like him a lot. Okay. So Mark, got good stuff for you. Mark is our Santa. He always bears <laughs> gifts. That's right. he, he doesn't have the beard or the gray hair. That's mine. <laughs> uh, but we're going to take a break. Uh, Mark, who does such a good job on this and look at film. You know, it, it's interesting. My, I, I watched Bo Nix live and so i was like i really like this no nobody likes him now he's dropping i watched Penix live and i fell in love and then you know i start talking to people and they talk me out of it the drake may is the fascinating one because the tr he does look like justin herbert oh this year it's different mark uh bo nix has 61 college starts uh michael Penix like 50 um I just feel like there are fewer surprises now that doesn't right. mean the quarterbacks are better exactly right but they've played like full seasons, no Zoom yep. meetings, coaches. Exactly right. 
So I do think this is a promising draft. That's my takeaway. I think so, too. I think some of these guys more promising than others, and a lot of it will depend on where they land. But every time you go into this deep dive of quarterbacks, if you've watched Forensic Files, yeah. I'm looking for clues. I want motive. I want my black light looking for blood splatter and yeah. all that. That's what I'm doing. And, and I want to see this guy after he throws an interception. Uh, I want to see him on third down, fourth down. I want to see him in the red zone. I want to see him in a dirty, muddy pocket where yeah. he can't totally step into the throw. I want to see what it looks like when he's ahead, when he's coming back on a drive down 14 in the fourth quarter. Who is this guy? I also go back and I watch. You know what I watch? Because they're going to be the face of my franchise. I go watch their post-game press conferences after a loss. Thank you. I really do. I just, I just want to know. And listen, some people think it's silly, but you know, your backwards hat deal. Is he a backwards hat guy? Is he not? Like, is he, does he stand at the podium and own the room and own the mistake? And Hey, we're going to get better. And it starts with me. Like I look at that stuff. I think that's important. It's yeah. something, it's not everything. And all those things factor into, okay, what's my judgment? What's my assessment? of this whole crime scene here. You know what I mean? So when you talk about Drake May, yeah. just some things that stand out to me. Okay. The pedigree. Youngest of four boys, all superstar athletes. Dad played quarterback in college. I like that. I, what do we get when we go to uh, dog breeders? We want to know their dad was a champion this and yeah. a mom was a champion that. Yeah. And, you know, it's just like horses, right? You're like, okay, what do we got? Who's he coming from? Where's he coming from? Kid played basketball in high school. Dude's junior year. Junior year. 16 points. Averaging 16 points as a junior, that's pretty good. Maybe mm. not a starter at Duke or North Carolina as a basketball player, but what made me, like, jump out of my chair, 11-plus rebounds a game. 11-plus rebounds a game. Rebounding is an attitude. Rebounding is anticipation, going to box out another guy. Rebounding tells me this dude's tough. Yeah. He, he wants it. You, yeah. you got to want a rebound. It's not just an accident. So that showed me a little something. Then you watch him play. Holy smokes. All of six, four plus big, tall, strong. He he's more of the Carson Palmer, Joe Flacco, Drew Bledsoe body type, Justin Herbert body type. Yeah. Then maybe some of these other guys where you're like, is he six foot? Is he six one, six one and a half? You know, yeah. did he have lifts in his shoes? I don't know, but I like what I see. And the dude launches the ball. When a guy's open, he keeps him open with the throw. You know what I mean? Those kind of those kind of things. Yeah, deep ball stuff. Oh, it's it matters. That ball jumps out of his hand yeah, now. And by and way, because he's a no, big body. Those which one of those big guys didn't have a big arm? They all do because they're big, strong, sturdy guys that can cut the ball loose from a high point up here. That's different. Puts a little more torque, a little more juice on the ball. So let's get to the clips. The first one we're going to show is always the bad clip. We're going to beat them up and then build them back up. So this first clip is interesting because you can tell he, he knows he's going to get man to man. He's got a quick little play action, but he sees these safeties communicate. And when safeties rock and roll with a cross ball motion, that tells me man to man across the board. Okay. That means I got guys running away on their routes. And now this receiver down at the bottom is going to run a big in route. Okay. He's going to be ripping across the field, which means you got to have anticipation and there are specific windows for this in route to hit. He starts on the right hash. So just inside the left hash is the catch point. You get in the yellow, it's getting a little dicey. You get back over the ball in the red, we don't want to throw that ball there because the DB's beat early on. Late in the down, the DB catches up. These are the plays you get away with in high school. But watch his eyes. He wants to throw down the middle, pocket breaks down, I'm on the run. Okay, now I'm looking in the flat. No, I don't want him. And I flash back, you show me this right here. You just pause the film and don't show me the play. If I didn't know it was an interception, I'd say it might be. <laughs> because look, where's that ball going? Back across the field and then this. We talked about this with Caleb a couple weeks ago. I don't want him taking those hits. So listen, do we have to correct some of this stuff? Yes. But you know what else I saw that was promising about this kid? Only one interception on third down and fourth down. Most of his interceptions are coming on first and second down. What does that tell me? Hey, we just got to take care of the ball. You're going to get me three more plays. We might break a tackle. We might. So you got to teach this kid a little bit about the game, a little bit about taking care of the football on first and second down. But when it's time to cut it loose on third and fourth down, this kid is nails through 21 touchdowns. So, okay, I can coach that out of him, in my opinion. Now go to the good. Now I want to look for stuff that he can recognize. It's an empty formation, okay? What's his awareness level in empty? You have no backs to block anybody. There's no safety in the middle of the field. 
I mean, it is antennas up, man. You're getting heat, and you're getting heat from this left side. You can see the whole thing start to overload from the left. So what does he do? He casually drifts to the right side. He knows he's got one-on-one, and he's got a tackle almost in his lap. He can barely step forward on this throw. So what does he do? He uses that big frame, that tall, strong, sturdy frame, and just drops this thing. Look at the anticipation. This ball's out before the guy's turned around, before he's beat the safety, and he drops it in the perfect spot. He keeps him open. He pushes him open with this throw in the back corner. That right there, whoo mama, I can work with that. I can work with that kid. Yeah. And the way he extends plays, I mean, you could tell he's a basketball player. You could tell he's tough. You could tell the film tells me everything I told you pre-film about being the youngest of four boys. The kid threw a left-handed touchdown pass against Pitt on a broken play, left-handed from like the six yard line. You're telling me this guy can't make plays? You're telling me this guy can't extend the ball? You're telling me this guy can't lead your team and be the face of your franchise? Can Holy I throw mom. something at you? I'm, in, I like, I'm starting to fall in love with this kid. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.